calls and so forth. This is fantastic. That means that I can hear something and I don't have to hear swear words in God's name in vain. I love it. And you can direct it how strict you want it and everything. And it is really cool. Because even regular TV set, they have relaxed the standards a lot. And this is amazing. And then I put the closed captions on because what will happen is you'll just hear silence on your TV set. But what they do is they substitute words, you know, when they're talking so you still get the gist of it. So it's really a good thing. I like it myself. So here you have to understand that when we, when we hear it, we have to actually, we have to apply it to our understanding. We have to understand that and we have to help lift up our voice and employ it and concentrate on it. Number seven, seek her as silver. This is a constant practice as one seeks for money to live and better oneself. So one seeks wisdom constantly. Look, guys, I'm getting older, but you know what? I want to seek more wisdom and more wisdom and more wisdom. That's what it's all about. I don't say, whoa, I have all these degrees. I'm finished learning. Who does that? You want to keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. And number eight, search for her as hidden treasure. Here is something that points to a difficult task. And here's what I state. Anything, and this is told me a long time ago, and I've tried to take it as my lesson too. Anything that is worth something takes a lot of work. Anything that is worth something takes a lot of work. Proverbs chapter 4, please. Proverbs chapter 4 and verses 5 to 13. Proverbs 4, 5 to 13. Get wisdom. And don't you love it with the exclamation point? Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor. Then you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have taught you in right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Now let's do some practical things here. Solomon's son was Rehoboam. <laughs> Rehoboam did not follow his father's advice. And do you know why? Because his father's example outweighed his advice. For the first 20 years of his life, if he would have died after that, I think Rehoboam would have followed suit. But because his example outweighed his words, Rehoboam went down that horrible path as well. And of course, Israel was split in half. My son, you didn't do it. But dad, you weren't a good example to me. I'm sorry, your example shouted out more than your words. Let's go to James chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. James chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. As we conclude this morning here, I want to just say some, some really important things. I've used these verses many times because they're so great about wisdom and counseling, especially counseling. And as we look at, at I'm going back, that's crazy. James chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And... Um, Rachel, for instance, your counseling that you have. And you were taught various techniques, obviously. That's your schooling. And she has her master's degree, and she has her job. She did a year's internship, and she'll probably get mad at me for saying this, but it's okay. I know her dad. Her dad says, yeah, embarrass her. Go ahead. So, <laughs> but she's done a lot of work with this. Now, she has to sit in, uh, set in certain parameters at her job. We understand that. But if you want to find out how to really counsel someone as a pastor or Keith as a youth pastor, for instance, 
It lines it up for us in James 3, 17 and 18. And it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable and gentle, willing to, to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. There it is. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And so you take every one of these things. First, it needs to be pure. Wisdom needs to be pure. The counseling needs to be pure. Spiritual integrity, never selfish motives. If I counsel with someone, it never can be for my motives. It can't be. I have to do it for the Lord and also for the person I'm counseling with. Number two, peaceable. I love this second one. Peaceable, promoting peace, which is always the end result uh, in a difficult situation. You never have controversy with the advice that you give. And so if a counselor says, no, just cut it off, man. Just cut the relationship off. He deserves that. That's bad counseling. It's not peaceable. <coughs> I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. Promoting peace, which is always the end result when you have a difficult situation. Number three, gentle. <coughs> In the Greek, it's a character trait of sweet reasonableness. Sweet reasonableness. Such a person will submit to all kinds of mistreatment and difficulty with an attitude of being kind, courteous, patient, humility, without any thought of hatred or revenge, even when you are wronged. You know, that's an amazing thing when you think about this, to be gentle. It's a character trait of sweet reasonableness. Number four, willing to yield. Wow, we are like concrete Willing to yield, this term describes someone who is teachable, teachable, compliant, easily persuaded, and who willingly submits to discipline or moral and legal standards. I will submit. I might not agree with that in my company or my, my whatever it may be in my job, but I will submit because of my job. Our society today doesn't want to yield to anything. We have become selfish, obstinate, playing the victim all the time. And what's in it for me attitude, and it is anti-God and anti-Bible. But see, God's wisdom it says what? Willing to yield. And when you're counseling, if a kid is not willing to yield or an adult is not willing to yield, they have a spiritual problem. Number five, full of mercy, the gift of showing concern for those who suffer pain and hardship and the ability to for forgive quickly and allowing for empathy in a difficult situation. Full of mercy to empathize with that individual. Number six, good fruits. Godly wisdom always produces good results. Godly wisdom always produces good results. If this wisdom is from God's word, it will never N-E-V-E-R, capitalized, bolded, highlighted, underlined, steer you wrong, okay? It will always produce good fruit, always. Number seven, without partiality. In the Greek, it means occurs only here in the New Testament. Do you understand that? It's the only places in the whole New Testament, this word without partiality. And it denotes a consistent, unwavering person who is undivided in his commitment and conviction and does not make unfair distinctions. You know, our justice symbol with the ladies blind and so forth and the balance scale. I know it's not true in real life because it's humans. But in God's way, it is true. Especially in counseling, you Never take sides. You need to stay impatient. So anyway, Rachel, you get a kick out of this. I was, I was counseling my very first time in First Church, 1980, and I had a husband and a wife coming in that were giving difficult, that had difficult problems. So I got this bright idea. I'm going to call the woman in first, and she's going to tell me from her point of view what is wrong with their relationship. I'm sitting there, and she's telling me what a horrible guy this guy is. And I'm saying, this guy's a jerk, man. I mean, I'm not out to her in my mind. I said, how in the world could you be married to this idiot anyway? And then I call him in. And I say, this lady, is a, she's a nut. How in the world can you be married to this woman? 
this is crazy. Then I call them both in and they were civil to each other. And I realized this form of counseling was not working. I had to change it up. <laughs> because, boy, if you only talk to one and then the other and you don't have them together, boy, you get a load of everything. So I had to learn how to counsel with people. But I had to make sure that I was very impartial. And then number eight, finally, the last one is this, without hypocrisy, this wisdom <coughs> walks the walks and talks the talk. The word of God is always what it appears, always. The wisdom needs to guide your step, and it's God's wisdom that does this. And so let me wrap up by just saying this. Wisdom, seek it, find it, and keep it. Let's bow our heads, please, and close our eyes just for a moment. Just ask two questions here this morning. <laughs> Number one, if you've never trusted Christ as Savior, would you like to make that decision today? If that is the case, would you slip your hand up, please? Anybody here who's never trusted Christ, you'd like to make that decision today? Second question, Christian. If you're here and you say, I need to have godly wisdom, I want to pursue it, I want to find it and do it what God wants, I really need to do this, I made, I'm making a decision to find godly wisdom today, would you slip your hand up, please? Yes, yes, hands are going up, yes, yes. I need godly wisdom, yes, yes. I want to do what God wants me to do, yes, yes. Heavenly Father, for the many hands that w were raised, Help us to follow after your instruction, after your statutes, after your laws, after your commands, after your word. Thank you for the many hands that were raised even today, Father. Help them to seek it, to possess it, to keep it, to love it, and to live it. Bless us, we have this invitation now in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, please, as we sing on that verse, please. And I think it's